So, I had a bit of a realization recently. Uh, I was in a, doing a standing position typing thing, and uh, lately I've been favoring the, uh, the flank a bit more, just because, I don't know, it, it's just convenient, it's light to carry around, it's, it's designed to be light and uh, sit on top of a laptop keyboard, so it's, it's just been kind of handy. Uh, but in the standing position, it wasn't that uh, that great because in the standing position, you really get your hands close to your body. That's just what you're doing, but down there. And it kind of exaggerates that wrist mo uh, placement. So you kind of need to do this on a square board, and that's not great. So I was like, all right, I got I to gotta switch it up. I had to switch to the Pleco. And the Pleco, the poor Pleco, had been so... Uh, so ignored for a while it was it was poor thing i was just all about the flank and i was all about the signum and i was just rocking on i was like pleco i i i i put it i mean honestly i didn't use it enough i, I put it for sale at the last keyboard meetup and no one bought it good um, because I was like, all right, I actually do need the plank or do need the Pleco for this because I need to be able to adjust my, uh, my angle of attack. <laughs> so, uh, I went and got the Pleco and the Pleco just from a design perspective, just so you know, Pleco is big and heavy and thick and loud. This is designed to be quiet and everything's pretty muted. Um, but this one has, uh, it's all acrylic, top and bottom. It's got loud, oh, I'm pressing buttons here. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with Emacs, I'm destroying my Emacs. Um, it has uh, a full plate, uh, acrylic plate, which exaggerates the sound. And it has an acrylic bottom, which really exaggerates the sound. And it's got the lights and it's flashy and everything. And it's basically the complete opposite of the flank. And I'm like, all right, this is, you know, I, I realize that I need the Pleco, but it's been a long time, so we'll see how much I really like it still. And I put my most recent firmware on it because I hadn't been updating it because I didn't use it. And I loaded it up, set my angle, tightened it, locked in the hinge, and then the lovely sounds. <laughs> I was just like why did i leave this ever <laughs> and it's it's hard to to step back because i'm i'm very well at least i play at being pretty pragmatic about all this it's like well i if it gets the job done then that's what's important you, know, you got your feels and your zelios for your filios and your sounds and your your this that and the other it's like, yeah no it, it's an input device it's for doing work and it's for making your work more efficient so I tried to be insulated from that, and no, 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 it, it's just an input device. Just it doesn't matter. Yeah, make it out of cardboard, make it out of acrylic, make it out of titanium. It doesn't matter. It's an input device. So when I picked this up and had the the <laughs> smile, I was like, "All right, all right, hang on." And I went, well, I, first of all, I, I switched to the Pleco and I was like, oh, it's so loud. I'm like, oh, it's so solid. Ah, oh, it's so heavy. It's so rigid and strong. I, I've even played with the black light, black light, the backlight a little bit. And just like blinky lights. Yeah. And it's kind of dark out. I'm going to turn out the lights in the kitchen. And ah, <laughs> you see all that. The lights playing the, the aurora borealis that gets projected onto the, the the ceiling when you turn it on i'm just like okay beyond the the pragmatic the practical it's cool it's cool all right i'm like okay i admit it i, I like that it's loud i like that it's clacky it's basically everything that the flank is not and i, I surprised myself and I was messing around with it, and I was like, you know, I'm resting this Pleco at a certain uh, angle. Why don't I go get the uh, Signum and see if I'm matching that angle? And sure enough, I was, which is good, which means the Signum is properly designed. 
But I set it up and I was like, oh, that's nice too. The, the, the nice cherry browns dropping down, <clears throat> the muted sound of the whole thing, how smooth everything is, the Gatoron greens on the modifiers, making the extra clackiness. It, it It's nice. And I, I realized that I... <clears throat> I... <clears throat> I like keyboards. I know. My wife was super surprised when I came to this realization. And as usual, other people are more aware of things that I'm projecting out than I am. But I, I, I do like this stuff. I do like the feels. I do like how they feel different. I do like how they're built to different specifications and for different tasks. I do like keyboards. I like input devices. It's cool. I don't know. I guess you can't work with something this long and not develop an appreciation for it. So that's my revelation. I, <laughs> I know it probably comes as absolutely no surprise to you, but uh, in speaking of input devices and liking things in the feels and stuff like that, um, this is my composition book. And I try very hard to use a, um, a space pen because, because of reasons. Space pen's cool. And that's about it. But I have some problems with it. Um, more or less, it's fine. But when I get to really creative work, I need paper. And I don't like that I need paper. But we're talking about input devices. And this is a... Pentel drafting pencil. It's actually kind of an old style. It's one from a long time ago. And I saw it and picked it up and I liked it a lot. And for whatever reason, this, this experience, just the color, the form factor, the shape, everything, the, the looks, the feels, not so much the sound. Maybe the sound, I don't know. <laughs> But your input device has an impact on how creatively you work. And as, uh, as strange as that is, I, I wish I had more control over what, what I could choose because I would choose something really cool. Because the last one that stuck with me was a mechanical pencil that was 0.9, which was annoying. And it was, it was pink and semi-transparent with glitter inside it. And I was like, I need a pencil. And I grabbed that one and I started going. And I was like, man, this is, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm really in a flow right now. And I'm like, let's hold on to this pencil. <laughs> so I wanted to find a different one. And I'm glad that it changed to this. Um, <laughs> just because I feel weird carrying around a, a pink glittery pencil. But try changing things up. You know, when you're, you're writing things, I'm, I'm, I don't like paper, technically. Just like I'm practical about keyboards. It doesn't matter. Well, it does matter, and that's part of you know, something that I don't like, but it's the reality. So if you're working with something, you're trying things out, <clears throat> you're designing something, try switching it up. Try changing things around. Switch to a pencil. Switch to a, uh, an orange Sharpie. Switch to something cheap and, and, and broken. See what happens. Uh, you might be surprised. We don't need fancy, expensive things. We just need interesting things. So this is a little bit of information about just input devices and appreciation for them. Um, it has an influence. It makes a difference. And certainly the composition book gets more filled up with notes and creative stuff and drawings and sketches and weird ideas when I'm using the right pencil. And when I'm not, or when I'm using that space pen, the work is there. It just doesn't flow. So mix it up. Try new things. And I'm um, finishing this video in under 10 minutes. Surprise! <laughs>